For more videos, please subscribe and click that notification bell so you can be notified when I post a new video. Thank you for supporting my channel. This video is going to be about how I balance being a mom and a wife and a YouTuber in PA school. Go as. Hey. Oh, you love it? Yeah, I was. Well, watch out. Camera, get it. What's up, you guys? It's Donna. I am back with another video for you guys. So, thank you so much to all of you who've decided to follow me on this journey and subscribe to this channel. Really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Can't thank you guys enough. With respect to me and my life, it's super, super compartmentalized. Like everything kind of went really quickly. I told you guys my timeline. I literally had maybe a month and a half, maybe let's stretch it out to two months just to be like round numbers, to plan my life, to move to another state, move my whole family with me, get my daughter in school, all of that, within that two month period to start PA school. So it was really Really like a whirlwind it was super super quick we had to make sure that we were planning what made it easy was me having a plan and I think that's what also makes my life as being a mom and a wife and doing YouTube and being in PA school all the much easier I have a plan I have like a set schedule um, of what I'm going to do when I'm going to do it my kids are in bed at a certain time I wake up at a certain time I'm in school from a certain time, I'm studying from a certain time. So it's very, very compartmentalized, very rigid, very kind of just planned out. And although that may sound kind of like whack, That's whack. <laughs> a little whack or boring having like this super rigid compartmentalized life, it's what works for me. And it's only for a year, you know? And that's what I keep saying to myself. This is only for a year out of my life. I'm only gonna be in school eight hours a day, studying all the time for a year. And then once I get into rotations, it's a little bit more lax, although I'll still be studying because I'm gonna still need to keep fresh all of the things that I learned the previous year for when I'm ready to take my pants. And then also just as I'm on the different rotations, making that sure that I'm staying fresh and up to date on the information that I'm gonna be studying and, and the people that I'm gonna be seeing on an everyday basis. For let's say, for instance, women's health, I, I need to study, but I'm not gonna be studying and as rigorously. It's not like I'm studying for a test. I mean, I guess it's kind of like the test of my life because I'm dealing with patients, but I'm not gonna be studying as I have been studying in the past. And so that's what I keep telling myself. But specifically, I plan, my day is planned out. Um, I am up around like 6.30ish, you know, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe a little bit later, depending on my days. As I stated before in the summer and fall sessions, a lot of my classes started at 8 a.m. So I had to be up a, a lot earlier than that. Um, my daughter goes to school for 8 a.m. Uh, luckily, the bus just comes and picks her up right down the street. So that's a benefit. If she has to be at school for 8 a.m. and my husband has to be there with her, I have to be at school earlier than that. So I was usually at school at like 7.30, and um, then she would be off at school at eight. My three-year-old, thank God for my husband, he's able to work from home, so he really takes care of her. Um, he's the one that directs her care throughout the day while I'm at school, which is a blessing. Um, that's one, another like major thing that any parent that's trying to go back to school, um, any type of school, but PA school specifically, it's so dense, the material that you're gonna be learning, it's so hard and rigorous that you're gonna be studying a lot. 
Therefore, it's important to have a great support system to take up, like pick up the slack where you may be lacking in terms of the parenting aspect of your life. Because there are there's going to be some times when you know you can't read a book when when you're with your child because you have to read your book because you have a test tomorrow that is. A really big test you know it's really really beneficial having him there as my support system so that's one major thing that I do I plan my life out and I also have a really really great support system at home that can take up the slack when I'm kind of like lagging behind as a mom you suck I know somebody asked me if I feel mommy's guilt and of course I do like because I I mean my kids I, they're seven and three yeah and I don't know necessarily how it's affecting them I can ask them questions but like really and truly you know I don't know for sure I don't know what the law in the long run what that's gonna look like or you know if there's gonna be any resentment but my desire my hope is that there isn't because they're still young and again it's only for a year and, and that's kind of what I keep telling myself because if I dwell on the man like I can't sit up here and play Barbies with my daughter right now or forgot to take her on this mommy daughter date it's like well dang you know like that I, I, I it would be like super hard I, to actually continue on with this like the stress and probably I'd get like a little depressed and feel like a failure. So it's like, why would you, why do that? Instead, focus on the positive. So although there are some times when I'm like, man, I feel kind of guilty that I'm not able to do this. I look and I'm like, okay, I only have six months left or I only have um, three months left. Or now I only have one month of school left until I'm off into my rotations and I have a little bit more time for my uh you know to give to them the time that I wasn't able to give to them in the past so that's like three things right there right being very very like planned out regimented having a great support system and although I do have guilt at times not dwelling on that guilt like you cannot do that because it's gonna you're you don't need any extra added stress and if there's somebody that's also like putting guilt on you in terms of like man you're not really being a good parent right now like you're not even spending time with your kid for whatever reason don't have them in your life because you don't really need that stress at that time when you're trying to like pass school to better your life your family's life your kid's life you don't need the negativity also what I like something else that I do so my kids I know I'm when I I used to be a nanny you guys right so I used to be a nanny back in the day and um, the person that I used to work for her kids used to go to bed at like five o'clock and I was like, dang, that's mad early. Like, you putting these kids to bed early. You're just trying to get some time to yourself. But um, but I get it now. Uh, my kids go to bed at 7.30 and people are like, how do you get them to go to bed at 7.30? At, like, I don't play any games. Like, it's bedtime, it's bedtime. Even if I have to put you back in the bed three or four times, you're in the bed and eventually you'll fall asleep. That's important because one, they're waking up super early in the morning as well. So they need to get like their 10, 12 hours of sleep. They're young, they're growing. So that's important. But also I need to be able to study as well. So it's a benefit for me because if they're in bed by 7.30 and they're super like they're down in REM by eight o'clock, I'm able to now spend the next four hours or so studying, the next two hours, three hours studying um, before I have to go to bed and make sure that I'm well uh, rested for the next day. So that's also something making sure that you get your kids on a schedule as well is very important. I think like the your best friend when you're a parent in PA school is coming in with a plan, having a plan and just kind of stick into it. You know, even if there may be days that you kind of like get off of your plan a little, like come back to that plan and make sure that you bring everybody back on that plan with you because that's gonna be your best friend and making sure that your life runs smoothly. And then like my major like big thing, like the most important part of what makes this all work is my time on the weekend. So with respect to my religion, I observe the Sabbath. So sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, I don't do any studying. I know it's freaking crazy. I don't do any studying whatsoever, but man, God is amazing and he is 
honoring me following what I believe because I'm making it you guys like so far I am doing fine I'm doing absolutely fine I'm passing and um, I'm going to make it to rotation so uh, I'm doing fine and and you can do that if you have, you know, for your, for me, it's my Sabbath. So Sunset Friday to Sunset Saturday, I don't study at all. It's family time. You know, we have devotion, we go to church. Oh, miss, I better get your slice. All on the line like a tide of fire. Stand up, talk to the one. You are holy. And they ask, what are you going to do to study? I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. Well, guess what? Stick together. So you are the ones. You are the ones. <laughs> Azzy, how was uh how was uh children's church? Great. You know, just kind of spending time together, have a little Sabbath movie, but it's important because it's not just important for me so that I can rejuvenate and like kind of refresh my night, my mind, and decompress from school from all of the studying that I've been doing. It's also important so that I can spend time with my family because I don't get to see them as much as I would like during the week. Um, so the Sabbath is really, really important to me and that it helps me a lot. I know some people may not necessarily feel like they can take a day off of studying. It may not necessarily work for you, but for me having that day, that time, and really literally the weekend, because even though I'm studying on Sundays or there are some Sundays where I'm studying like for the majority of the day, like I did that a lot in the summer session when I was fresh, newly minted into PA school, but I got better at it. You know, I, I got better at managing my time and knowing how much I needed to study for a certain class, how much I didn't need to study for another class. And that helps in kind of focusing your time with respect to spending time with your family and your kids, and then also spending time in the books. So when you get into PA school, the one thing that I can tell each and every one of you is, first off, it's absolutely doable to be a parent and in PA school, and even a single parent, because I know of some people that are single parents or have been single parents in PA school and they made it, and they're um, PAs currently, or they're coming into PA school, or they're currently PA students. So it's doable, you guys, so don't let that deter you from applying to PA school or um, actually like ex taking your acceptance, you know, accepting your ac acceptance into PA school. But take that first month, you'll, you'll need that first good month to actually just kind of focus yourself, make sure that you have a plan, make sure that you have kind of a regiment, uh, a schedule to stick by that will be helpful and beneficial to you for you to study and then also for your family with respect to family time. And I'm saying that month because it does take a month for you to kind of get acclimated in that month, you should have all a test in all of your classes by that time. So you would know, hey, I need to study a little bit more for this or a little bit less for that. I can devote a little bit more time here and take a little bit more time away here. But after that month, you're good. You're going to be fine. And especially after that first three months of that semester or um, if you're on a quarterly system, however long that is for that quarter, you'll be fine. You should be absolutely okay with that. And you'll be a PA soon enough and you just would have a few more months of your didactic year left and then it's off to rotations and you can re kind of adjust how you study and how you spend your time your free time and how you spend time with your kids <laughs> yeah baby that was nice give me a huggy give a bow bow to bow yeah <laughs> that's really how I do it honestly it's all about support planning my Sabbath and um, just making sure that everybody is on a schedule and it works so hopefully this helps all of you who have been asking me these questions and any of you who's thinking about becoming a PA or applying to PA school or NPA NP school and you're concerned that you're you know a parent you're a mom specifically um, and spending that time away from your kids what's that gonna do to them and how does that work because it's not easy but it's doable all right so thank you guys so much for asking me for that question and thank you guys so much for watching if you have any other questions related to PA school or being a mom <laughs> at all go ahead and leave that in the comment section below and if you haven't already done so go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA thanks I will talk to you guys next time bye